continuing our discussion of uh, free body diagrams and shear force and bending moment diagrams for uh, this kind of a body. So uh, we want to be able to now move on to a, a more complicated problem. Up to now we have seen distributed loads in which the distributed load looked, looked this way. Now you have a triangular distribution in this case. The question is, what do we do here? Well, let's start. We want or the question that we need to address is the following. Question is find shear force and bending moment at x equal to 1 and x equal to 4. So let's mark that point. x equal to 1 is somewhere here. Let's call that point P1. x equal to 4 is somewhere there. Let's call that point P2. Okay. So that distance is 1. This distance is 4. Okay. As usual, I'm going to draw a free body diagram. Our coordinate axis is going to be like that. I'm going to draw a free body diagram for this. And it's the free body diagram looks like this. And this is 6 kilonewton per meter. That's this original height. This is 6 kilonewton per meter. The slope of this, since this length is 3, it is 2 is to 1. The slope of this is 2 is to 1. Okay. So we have all that set up. You know, in this particular case, again, use common sense. and symmetry and you can exploit symmetry this means that ay equal to by equal to half the load okay and ax is 0 so it's pretty easy to see ay equal to by equals one half times what's the total load six times three over two plus six times three over two so that's this area of the triangle That will immediately give me that the AY equals BY equals 9 kilonewtons. Excellent. Now we start out and we want to actually do the next part. Part B is SF shear force and bending moment at x equal to 1 meter. I'm going to draw this free body diagram. Now this you have to be careful. That's 1 meter. We know that's 9 kilonewton. The distributed load starts out at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's 6. 6 kilonewton per meter. What will it end up? In 1 meter, how much will it drop? Notice it will drop by 2 because the slope is 2 is to 1. So this one will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will be 4 and it's a straight line like this. So the distributed load looks like that. So now you can see why we need the centroid for uh, trapezoidal figures. Whenever you have triangular loads, you have to worry about it. There's a shear force. There is the positive bending moment. Okay. So, shear force and bending moment. So, as usual, I'm going to do 
summation f y positive equal to zero gives me nine minus v minus now I have to find the area this area how much is that it is six plus four over two times one this is average height times base because this length is one so this gives me shear force if you compute it shear force is 4 kilonewtons what about bending moment summation around the origin equal to 0 so now I have to find out where is the centroid of this thing the centroid will be here the x component of the centroid so this distance is xc and xc remember xc for a trapezoid now let me write that in green so you can see so let me erase all this stuff so let me write it in green xc equals base times h1 plus 2 h2 divided by h1 plus h2 three times so h1 is 6 h2 is uh, 4 and b is 1 so this will turn out to be 0 0.4667 so once we get the centroid, we can say this implies uh, m minus v times 1 minus 6 plus 4, sorry, uh, 6 plus 4 over 2 times 1, that's the area, times 0 0.4667, that's the centroid, equal to 0. So if I solve for m, m turns out to be 6.33 kilonewton meter. We are done. Shear force, bending moment. Now let's look at part C, which is to find shear force and be a bending moment at x equal to 4 meters. Let's draw the free body diagram again. By now you should have seen the drill, so it's always the same thing. 9 kilonewtons, there is 6, and here it drops all the way to 0, and then one more. So this height is 2 kilonewton per meter because this slope is 2 and this length is 1 meter and this is 3 meters this is 6 kilonewton per meter and this is all downwards okay so again summation of all the forces in the y direction upward positive equal to 0 gives me minus v plus 9 minus 6 times 3 over 2 that is the area of 1 that's this one minus 2 times 1 over 2 that's the area of the second one that's that one equal to 0 this is that so this gives me v equals minus 1 kilonewton. If I take moments around the origin, m0 equal to 0 will give me 6 times 3 over 2 times 1.5. That's the centroid of this. This one is x centroid first one. 
the centroid of the second one is here and i want you to understand that it is this distance what we are interested in we know how far that is that's one third of the base times this one that's one third so this one will be 11 over 3 that's the centroid of this region it's one third from this end from the right angled end so that's what we get so now we are ready minus 2 times 1 over 2 this is the second area this is a1 this is area of the second one times xc2 will give me times 4 minus 1 third that's xc2 it, that turns out to be equal to 11 over 3 that's this one remember it's the it's the coordinate of the second one not just the location you can't just put one third you know you have to measure from where you are doing the origin that's why it's important for you to make sure you know where you are taking moments around i'm taking moments around this point so i need the distance that distance okay the distance from here all the way to there so please remember that um, plus m equal to 0 so if you solve for m sorry minus oops i didn't account for everything minus v times 4 equal to 0 uh, oh my goodness i forgot to draw the two crucial things right um, don't forget that if you if you do that i will say that your free body diagram is not correct you know i make the same mistake but please remember i caught it before i finished it so same thing for you make sure you, you draw the right free body diagram so once you've done that then this means that i'm going to substitute for v from here and so i will get m equals minus 1 times 4 minus 9 plus plus 9 plus 11 over 3 which turns out to be 3.667 kilonewton meters okay so i want you to understand that we now have the the shear force and bending moment at any particular location it's a different different matter if you want to find it for a lot of locations you don't want to go on drawing different free body diagrams that's where the shear force and bending moment diagrams come in handy that's what we are going to do next time